there have been many thematic dialogues here at WISIS 2015. And one of them is on empowering women through technology. And Claire Sibthorpe was part of that. Claire is with me now. Ms Sibthorpe, hello. Hello. Uh, now, you're the program director of the Connected Women program. You've been doing some research, I understand, a big uh, project on understanding mobile phone use and access to, in developing e economies. What did you find? Yeah, so we looked at, we did a big study that looked at women's access to and use of phones in low middle income countries. Um, and this came, we did a study in 2010, so we looked at where things are now. Um, and I think there's some sort of key things that came out of, of um, it. So first of all, I think, uh, is that a lot of women, people don't have mobile phones, despite the fact that there's been a larger increase in mobile phones. So um, we estimate that 1.7 billion uh, females in low middle income countries don't have phones. And um, there are fewer women than men who have phones. So in fact, there are um, 200 million fewer women than men that have phones. Okay. Um, so it's quite a, there's a, a gender gap and there's a gender gap for, you know, a range of, of reasons. So, um, and then when we look, so that's just on the ownership issue, but then when we look at, at usage, um, there's actually a growing gap around usage. So um, when women do have phones, um, you don't see much of a difference in terms of say, uh, making phone calls or receiving texts, but when you get into the more advanced features like mobile internet and um, mobile money, then you again see a growing gender gap. Um, so if you look at a country like Kenya, for example, in our study, uh, where the gender gap in ownership is relatively low, uh, you still have big gaps around, we asked the question, did you, have you tried Facebook? And sort of 62% of men said they did, and um, 40 Two percent of women. So, uh, if so, so I think it's important to one get you know in, um, make sure that women have equal access to phones at men, and and then also ensure that this usage gap is addressed. Because if women don't have, aren't using phones, then they're not Pretty you know the getting point. the same benefit. So it's a big number, one point mm -hmm. seven five, and the two hundred million gap between the the genders is um, also big. But you've obviously done quite a granular analysis. How did you get down to such detail? Oh, um, we did, yeah. So we we have we collected a lot of data. Um, <laughs> we uh, we did we looked at uh, eleven countries. We did a thousand surveys in each country. We did a lot of focus groups. We have data from mobile operators and other surveys. We did you know a lot of focus group discussions, and we also then looked at you know why why is there this gap? Well, what this are the what barriers? I was going to ask. Yeah, yeah what, why is the why why do yeah, we have yeah. these disparities? Yeah. So um, we asked uh, people what you know what are the big barriers to accessing using phones, and the top five are so the top two were cost and network quality and coverage. The, th the third was security and harassment. Uh, and then also um, operator agent trust and um, digital literacy and confidence. And then also underlying those is the fact that they're, you know, uh, social norms and the fact that um, their um, education and income, you know, uh, women tend to have lower education, lower income than men. And so these sort of cultural and social factors also, you know, disproportionately affect women. Okay. So these barriers disproportionately affect women. Some of them seem, would seem easier to solve than others. Yeah. The cost is coming down, coverage is going up. Do you think this will make a significant impact or these other elements that, I guess, the social uh, elements need to be addressed uh, before you're going to see the changes that you're looking for? I think it's, uh, I think it's that you need, it's, there's no kind of one solution. It has to be, has to be all together. It has to be a con concerted approach. And I, I think one thing, also the research shown, unless there's a concerted effort by people, this gender gap won't close. We looked at it ten, you know, five years ago, and you know, it doesn't close naturally on its own without you know, targeted efforts um, in these different areas. It's, yeah. Okay, so again, so, your classic uh, multi-stakeholder solution uh, to, a, to a very complex problem. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you said the trend was not, not good. Uh, in terms of the difference between you and your last assessor now? Or? No, I think, uh, so there's more women who have access than there was before, but there's still a gender gap. Right. Um, and I think the gender gap is also, it, it differs depending on where you are. So, um, for example, uh, when we looked at, you know, in, in India it had a 30, women are 36% less likely than men to have a phone, um, which is, you know, uh, where if you look at Kenya, it's 7%. So it does, it varies. And so um, in Kenya, the, the, it seems to have reduced things like M-Pesa have made an impact on reducing it. So I think there's, um, you know, it's, it, there's, it's, it's, it's uh, it can't say across the board, it's decreased. There's certain areas where this, it remains very large and very acute. And I think this usage gap is growing now. I mean, to get the real benefit from homes, you have to be doing more than just um, making phone calls and sending and receiving texts. So this is a, the next issue we need to tackle. <laughs> so, All right. Well, yeah. um, um, uh, Ms. Sipthorpe, we could probably talk a lot more about this. Mm. We're out of time, unfortunately. Uh, Claire Sipthorpe, the Program Director for the Connected Women Program, I thank you for your time. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Yeah.